So the community director at 343 Sketch recently hopped on the Kind of Funny podcast to talk about Halo Infinite, talking about various things like the sandbox, like the gravity hammer, and what's going to be changing with that potentially, some pain issues that people are having with the battle pass and store pricing, and touching on a little bit about the future when it comes to campaign DLC and the next Halo title. Oh, and Legendary Firefight. If you guys like these informative videos, make sure to tap like, you know, for algorithm reasons. And if you're part of the 81% of people who watch this channel who are not subscribed and want to keep up to date with everything going on with Halo, well, you know what to do then. So let's get right into those details. Now in this podcast, I talked a lot about Halo, but I'm gonna talk about the highlights of things you're gonna want to know about this. One thing I talked about was the sandbox and specifically the gravity hammer, which got a significant buff within season five, where if you're within that damage range at all of the gravity hammer, you're gonna get killed by it. Seeing a lot of community sentiment saying people, they love the buff to the hammer. Some people say they hate the new hammer and Sketch stated that they don't really have any changes planned for the gravity hammer at the moment. They're kind of waiting to see player data, community sentiment as a whole to see if anything needs to change with it. We did see with the networking model changes that came with Firefight that all the physics have been lost when it comes to the gravity hammer again. So something about this hammer has just been pesky when it comes to 343 trying to get it tuned just right. I do feel like 343 needs to spice up the sandbox a little bit with Halo Infinite. I feel like things have been kind of stale for kind of pretty much like a year now at this point. We need some new kind of weapons. We even know we did recently get the Bandit Evo, but it's kind of just like, like an evolution of the Bandit Rifle. We have seen leaks and rumors of like that shotgun with a gravity hammer at the end of it or something like that. We could potentially get that sometime soon, maybe even season six. If we get any concrete information about it, you know I'll share it with you guys here on the channel, as I always do. Though I would say that the sandbox is tuned in a rather good state right now, but I just feel like something needs to be coming in to spice it up a little bit, you know what I mean? Next, they talked about battle passes and store pricing. Store pricing has been a major issue within the Halo community. Some people think things are too high. Some people have seen argue that things are even fair or even lower than expected when it comes to the standardized model for free-to-play games that we see within the industry and sketch says that yes he recognizes that it can be quite the pain point within the community doing that switch from a paid model where you get everything within the box to a free to play model there's going to be that issue when it comes to going like hey i was able to get this for free back in the day but now i have to pay for it your nickel and diamond me kind of thing but this is what comes with a free to play model game and they specifically talked about the halo ce armor set that came in recently and sketch stated that 343 knew that if there was going to be something that would sell really well within the store it would be that ce armor and it definitely did because it took halo infinite on steam alone from 115th best selling game to the 15th with one armor set and with the store being the only way 343 can earn any kind of monetization when it comes to the production of halo content there's going to be you know a give and take here some things you're going to have to pay for if you want them some things you're going to be able to earn for free which sketch actually mentions within this podcast as well saying he feels like there is a decent balance right now between stuff that you can earn for free within Halo Infinite and things you can buy into as well, which honestly, I would agree when it comes to just objective levels of content that yes, there is a pl plenty of things you can earn for free within the game. And, but there's also plenty of things you can buy as well. The battle passes costing $10. I mean, I put enough Halo time in that $10 is worth it for me because I like the customization. Also with the new operations coming in, you have 20 tier free battle passes as well with those. Now it does come with a nice little premium edition for like an extra 500 credits. You get like one little extra item if you feel like it's worth it. To me, for this operation that we have going on right now, I didn't feel like the paid version was worth it. We'll see what happens with the winter contingency operation coming here on December 19th. And Sketch did state that he didn't want to speak for the engagement and monetization storefront team people because they see the data. They know what the community kind of has pain points on and where the pricing really should be. Within the podcast, they didn't discuss the recent price hike that happened to some items within the store, though we do have this explanation from Sketch, which we covered previously on the channel here, talking about items that from season one through four actually recently had their prices increased into the store and sketch does provide a long explanation basically stating that when it comes to multi-core items now being available some things have more value than others for example think of it like this you have one coating that can fit on all like five cores or are right there right that's worth an x amount of money 
Should that be worth the same amount as a coating that's worth, that can only fit in like one core? That coating that can only fit on one core should cost less because it has less value to the player. So what 343 did is if they took the five coating core item to a higher price point and kept the original one core coating at like the same price we've had previously. So logically that kind of makes sense but seeing a price hike at all when it comes to the store especially when it comes to the halo community i mean like no one's gonna like that but like sketch said within the podcast it's a way for them to keep the lights on and keep producing more content for halo infinite so it's a give and a take I understand it. Next, they touched on campaign DLC. We did see Sketch politely cut somebody off when it came to the topic. I would say he did get a little roasted by the Reddit community, but I think that was a little unfair to Sketch right there. Uh, campaign DLC, Sketch directly said, nothing in active development right now goes back to saying that when they went back to focus on the multiplayer experience to get that live service up and running, taking those resources, moving it over to the multiplayer side of thing, and also laying off about 95 people, mainly in charge of the campaign side of things that, yeah, like campaign DLC guys for Halo Infinite, it's just not going to happen anytime soon. I think 343 is looking more towards the future when it comes to any form of storytelling when it comes to Halo Infinite, which I totally get it. Campaigns are very expensive and very time consuming and really just like a one time purchase where it comes to the multiplayer side of things, you get continuous revenue. It's a little less complicated when it comes to the production of the content as well. Not saying that it's any easier. I'm just saying that you can produce more content for people to purchase into when it comes to multiplayer customization than you can to when it comes to a brand new storytelling element. It still hurts me so much just because Halo Infinite set itself up perfectly for campaign DLC. The way the world is created with these little islands that you are attached to, they can be like, oh, a new island just kind of floated in and it's like a snowy map area and we found these new enemies and things like that. Oh, it would just be so great to have some campaign DLC for Halo Infinite. It was, I love the campaign for Halo Infinite as well. It's just a shame it's not being expanded upon, but it does seem like we're gonna get some new Halo experiences in the future. Sketch talks about it right here. Journey, and as I look further ahead, um, I definitely don't think Halo's best years are behind us. I think there are a lot of really cool, exciting things on the horizon. Some, some things are further out. Folks that have been kind of keeping a keen eye might notice that we've started sort of posting some job job postings again. Um, I mean, the, the the winds are blowing. We are starting to, to look ahead to the future. Um, I don't think we have anything to say on that front for quite a while, but you know, I mean, Infinite, as good as it is, and as more great things there are still to come, um, the studio has ambitions that that reach beyond infinite and i'm very very excited and energized to sort of take all the cumulative 25 years and all the learnings from infinite and and apply that to what could be next so this is really just like the first time we've heard any official statement that there's going to be another halo game coming we did hear about this previously from pierre heinz when when the layoffs happened and heard all the rumors about new teams coming in to develop for halo saying that 343 is going to continue developing on the halo stories but that was two sentences said about a year ago now at this point so we're actually going to get a new halo game what's going to be like what's it going to be we have absolutely no idea but we do have some information from insiders like Jason Schreier. Kind of tying back into the engine pivot to the Unreal Engine. Now, a lot of people thought this was more tied to Tatanka, but I feel like Tatanka is more on the back burner right now. I don't really think we're gonna be seeing any form of a Battle Royale anytime soon. It was pretty hot for leaks when it came to that mode about a year ago, and now we've heard absolutely nothing about when it comes to any form of updates ever since Bonnie Ross left the studio. So I think just like the entirety of the Halo franchise is just kind of up in the air to see like where things are going to go. I feel like this whole year for 343 was just trying to figure out like how do we do Halo? Again, Tatanka has never actually been confirmed officially in any form. We all know about it because of all the leaks and rumors we've seen of throughout the year now about talking about this mode but i wouldn't set any expectations that we would ever see tatanka actually happen they'll go into development see where it goes and if they don't like it they'll just kind of drop it we've heard those rumors way back when they were thinking about making halo infinite into a hero shooter which they tested it out and they said they didn't like it though i do feel like it was rather odd that they even tested it in the first place felt like kind of wasted development time in my opinion as a halo long time halo fan you never know until you shoot your shot and you know i think that's what happened with that hero shooter development rumor that was going on for such a long time firefight being added into Halo Infinite has been a great addition as well and Sketch actually talks about what's going to be coming next for Firefight which I think a lot of people who are looking for more of a challenge 
are going to really enjoy this. My sources tell me that there will be the, the legendary version of Firefight will be dropping at some point. The team did want me to give a shout out. You can technically play it right now in custom games. So um, I know there are already custom sessions happening with, with legendary Firefight King of the Hill. And then I know people are already making their own sort of traditional wave-based firefight modes and trying to make them as hard as possible. So for folks that maybe are finding the heroic experience to be too easy, I challenge you to dip into the custom game browser, maybe hit the Halo Discord server. You'll find no shortage of things to really test your skills. That's really great to hear because I do feel like heroic is a great launch difficulty for just people who are, want to have like a general average skill kind of mode having the normal mode there just for anyone who wants to jump in and play. Though I do feel like there is an extra room up there for higher difficulty things. Could see Legendary coming in maybe as like a weekly play as like we did with uh, the Mythic Firefight mode back in Halo 5. Again, we'll have to wait and see when we get those details coming in. And of course, once we do, I'll share with the guys here on the channel like I always do. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you tap like. It really does help out the video. Subscribe to keep yourself updated with what's going on with Halo. Check out this video right here. If you missed any content from me recently, we've talked a lot about Firefight. Well, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.